This is a video about how Errol Spence deals with lateral movement, particularly aggressive lateral movement. When I mean aggressive, I mean for the purpose of setting up offense. And then I'm gonna make a video on how he deals with passive lateral movement or defensive lateral movement, which is basically the, uh, for the purpose of defending shots or getting away from shots because Terrence Crawford is going to do a little bit of both and so we're going to look at Sean Porter trying to laterally move on the outside and on the inside and how Errol Spence reacts and responds so firstly right here Sean Porter circling to his uh, to his left and Errol Spence his stance is going to change and shift more towards that direction because he's trying to cut off the ring and once Porter realizes it, he stops and he tries to start doing juke moves like a football player. And the Errol Spence is trying to keep up with him. But then once Errol Spence is following Porter's movements, Porter can bait him into an attack. Basically, the movement disguises the attack. And then here again, Sean Porter is going to try and get Errol Spence to follow him. Once Errol Spence starts following his lead, Sean Porter can disguise his attack. And so when Errol Spence is focused on following or cutting off somebody laterally moving like that, it can leave openings because he's taking away focus from his defense. And so later on, we go see him adjusting and trying to add some defense into his uh, his walk down. And so we'll see that later on. And so now Spence is walking him down again and Porter's laterally moving. Porter's trying to circle around. And now now look how Spence is reacting. Now he's coming in, making sure he got his hands up and he corners him. He cuts him off good this time. He corners him against the ropes. And now Porter has to clinch up to try and neutralize Spence and Spence can start working on the inside. But watch this too. He's gonna try and cut him off with his jab. He tries, that, that jab is actually does a few different things. I don't know how many of them Spence was thinking about, but it does a few different things. So for one, it helps cut off the exit that, that Porter's trying to do. For two, it tracks him down, keeps a bead on where he's going. But for three, this is definitely probably what Spence was thinking. Push him against the ropes. That's usually what a lot of his, his straight shots are meant to do. So he pushes him against the ropes and that's where Spence wants to be. Because if he's against the ropes, he can work on the inside and do, do what he does best. And then you're gonna see some clips of Porter trying to turn Spence. Sometimes he has success, sometimes he doesn't. Here he's gonna uh, find a way to circle around and get Spence in a compromised position aggressive lateral movement right for the purpose of doing damage so now he has spence up against the ropes but spence is gonna dig his head into porter's chest and shoulder and start driving him back so he can reverse the position spence is really good at that it's subtle stuff like that to counter the more athletic moves of somebody like porter or crawford or people that that can move around better than him now look how Spence denies Porter trying to turn him against the ropes. Porter's gonna try and do it again. He's gonna try and turn him against the ropes. Spence clenches up, controls that arm, puts him back against the ropes. Here, Porter's gonna try and step his left leg deep around Arrow Spence's right leg so he can take the, the backside angle. But Arrow is gonna do a good job of using his shoulder and forearm to, to kind of like check Porter's move and, and stop him from getting that angle completely. One of the signature moves of Arrow from the outside is the one, two to the body or the one, one, two to the body. And it's used to close distance and the back opponents up against the ropes. It works there. And then Sean is now pinned. He's forced to escape. But if you look, there's only one way to escape because that side of the ropes is closed off by Spence. So he can only go one way. Spence knows that he tries to cut him off. It probably would have been better to throw a right hand instead of a left hand, but regardless, when he's cornered like that, he only had one way and then so Spence could try and take advantage there. Again, Porter's back is against the ropes. He's gonna try and bait him with some feints so that Spence can step in. When Spence steps in, Porter's gonna try and turn him against the ropes. Look how Spence reacts. Spence steps around and now look at the position they're in. Porter's back is still against the ropes because instead of Spence coming in and, and going to uh, Porter's right where Porter can then turn him, and take the take his back uh spence goes around one of the problems is that sometimes errol spence can be a little bit predictable with the type of attacks he's going to use especially from the outside and so sean porter is going to see the jab coming and then he can turn him that way 
Because this time he didn't step around. He was is he was headed in a, in a straight line down the middle, so Porter could actually get him this time because he didn't step around at an angle. This is one of my favorite parts of the fight, and I, I got to put this in point five speed because it's it's real subtle stuff. But so Porter's gonna try and step around right here to get a good angle to land shots on Spence. Spence is gonna frame with his forearm right here. This arm framing up against Porter's guard. And then that leaves an opening for him to left, land his left hand. And then he's gonna use his shoulder to push out and escape from that position. And then once he escapes, Porter's gonna try and catch him. Porter overextends, Spence jumps back in the range and lands a hook. So Spence's movement on the inside, his feet on the inside is really underrated. He, he found a way to get out of the bad position, put himself in a good position, make Sean Porter overextend and then counter him. This is just a good little vid part one on Spence dealing with lateral movement. Then we're gonna go and deal with a different kind of lateral movement because both is gonna show up in the fight like how I said at the beginning. Immortality serum out, back to Crawford. How can I die if I'm immortal? Monster in my eyes, I'm immortal. I ain't got no time to be cordial. Ripping up shit, I'm making big decisions. I'm feeling fire and important. Lightning striking and torching all of my rivals turn to corpses different.